In this video, we're going to be going over 10 things that Dead Island 2 doesn't tell you. 10 details that aren't immediately obvious to players. These are going to be hidden details about the game, hidden features about the game as well. To put it simply, these are things that you should know about Dead Island 2 that will definitely help you that the game doesn't tell you and isn't immediately obvious to every single player. So yeah, these are 10 things that you should definitely know about Dead Island 2 that you definitely haven't been told. So let's waste no more time and let's get straight into the video. So the first thing is that not everything will show up on the map. Now, as you unlock each district, icons will appear on the map to show you where you can find things like fuse boxes and lock boxes as well. However, not everything will be visible. You'll really want to keep an eye out on the compass bar at the top of your screen to find nearby points of interest and have them show up on the map. Now, some districts will have as little as 15 points of interest, while some of them will actually have over 40 to find, so it really does vary depending on where you are on the map. So yeah, of course, whilst it is important to utilize the map and make the most of it, not everything is going to be on there, so you can't fully rely on the map. So so yeah, definitely use it, use it to your advantage, but just remember that you can't use it all of the time. It's not always going to help as not everything's going to appear there. You really do have to utilize the compass bar at the top of your screen as well to be able to find those nearby points of interest. And yeah, each district will vary in the amount of points of interest that it does have. Some with as little as 15 and others with over 40. So of course, there are loads of districts within Dead Island 2. And of course, well, you need to be able to get to those districts nice and quickly. And one of the best ways to do that is through the use of fast travel. Now, fast travel isn't for everyone, of course. Some people prefer to be able to enjoy the game, get what they paid for, and obviously explore all the areas that Dead Island 2 has to offer. And I completely understand that. That is definitely a great way of playing the game. But for those of you that want to be able to get from point A to point B quickly and as quickly as possible and as efficiently as possible, then the best way to do so is, of course, by using the fast travel map, which is found within certain areas. But it is worth noting that fast travel isn't available right at the start. You can fast travel in the game, but you will have to wait until you're quite a good chunk of the way through the story before you can actually do so. To unlock and be able to utilize fast travel within in Dead Island 2, you do need to have visited at least five of the districts within the game. So basically, just play through the story until you've been to five different areas, and then you will get access to fast travel. It will just unlock, and yeah, you'll be able to start going around and revisiting neighborhoods that you have already gone through. It is worth noting though that it is a bit limited with how you can use it and where you can use it. Now, each time you want to fast travel, you will need to find one of the in-game maps, which are usually located at safe houses, and then you can go from there. You'll be able to fast travel wherever you want in certain districts. Now, once you do have this fast travel ability, you can actually then check the map legends to see how many main story missions, side quests, lost and found missions, and points of interest there are in every single district. It's pretty useful there and something that comes along with fast travel that's definitely not obvious to players. So yeah, by getting fast travel, which is unlocked by visiting five districts, you'll then get access to fast travel and then the access to the map legend, which basically gives you sort of compendium information about, you know, how far you've got through the game and where certain items are on the map. So the third thing that the game doesn't tell you is that your health actually slowly replenishes. Now, you don't just have to rely on protein bars, energy drinks, or med packs to be able to heal yourself within Dead Island 2. Your health will always recover, albeit this is very slow, but when you're out of danger, you will slowly recover in health. Now, each layer has a different stat when it comes to peak health and health recovery, so how quickly this happens and how much health you have to begin with will depend on who you do choose. But generally speaking, no matter the character, at some point, it may be slow, it may be fairly quick, but you will slowly replenish your health. Basically, this will happen when you are out of combat, so as soon as you're out of danger, your health will slowly start to replenish. Of course, yeah, the speed varies on the Slayer that you have chosen. But if you start to get weak right near the end of combat, let's say you've just got one or two more zombies to kill, and you're, you know, fairly weak, but you think you'll be able to kill them, then you may as well just wait and not waste a med pack or a protein bar or an energy drink on healing yourself when you can just wait, get out of combat, and then you will heal yourself slowly. But of course, if you're going to be in lots and lots of combat, then definitely, definitely utilize the healing items within the game since, well, yeah, this does isn't going to be able to save your life. So now we're on to the fourth thing that the game doesn't tell you, which is still on the side of things when it comes to health and recovery items, which is that they actually have extra benefits. So med kits aren't just great for healing in Dead Island 2. They will also remove any status effects for your character. So whether you're on fire or accidentally stepped in some acid, if you use a med kit, you will be cured, which is really useful. So if you're low on health and you're also on fire, then you will be able to stop all of that and, you know, basically really save your life by using a med kit. It's not just going to improve your health, it will improve your overall status as well. And along with that, energy drinks are also very useful, not just for health recovery, but will also build your fury meter. Pretty useful if you're about to get into a massive fight and you've almost got your fury meter full, then you may as well just use an energy drink if you have one, since well, you'll be able to get that to the maximum before you enter combat. It's very useful and definitely, definitely something worth knowing. So now we're on to the fifth thing, and that is to ignore these scope boxes at the start of the game. Now you'll find plenty of those boxes in plenty of homes 
items and buildings as you run around Dead Island 2. And you might be wondering what they are, or if the server offline pop-up is actually related to your game. Now these will make sense later on in the game, so definitely don't go near them at the start of the game. It just won't really help you, it's not going to be very useful. And basically, yeah, ignore them until you get later on in the game, since they will be no use to you right at the beginning of the game. Definitely something worth noting. I'm not going to go into detail about what they are, since the game is still very new, and most people won't have finished it yet, so yeah. To avoid spoilers, basically, just don't go near them at the start of the game, it's just not worth it. So the sixth thing is that you should alternate between selling and dismantling weapons within the game. Now at the start of the game, you'll want to dismantle duplicate weapons to increase the number of parts you can use for mods and blueprints within the game. However, you'll soon find out that with looting and dismantling, your inventory is going to be full in no time at all. So there are storage lockers for your weapons, but to be honest, rather than stuff this to the brim with your weapons you're not going to get much use of, you should start to sell your common weapons with lower stats and keep those with the best mods. The aim is to get the rarest weapons, you can upgrade and modify these into powerful zombie slaying machines, and for that you will need money. So later on in the game, as you find better weapons, you'll also discover that even without perks, they can be sold for quite a bit of money. So yeah, definitely at the start of the game, you want to dismantle those duplicate weapons and make sure that you are making money off of that later on, to be able to get the best weapons possible as you get to the end of the game, when these zombies are of course going to be more powerful, as you are a higher level. So now we're on to the seventh thing that the game doesn't tell you, and that is that there is an FOV slider. This is available on the PlayStation 5 and also Xbox Series X, and also PC and Xbox Series S, and yeah, you may as well utilize this. A lot of people don't like the default FOV, the field of view, on consoles, and this time around on a console game, we don't always get this, but you can improve your FOV. You can increase that if it is something you want to do. Of course, you might prefer the standard FOV, some people do, and of course, that is absolutely fine. If you are on an older console, unfortunately, you can't change the field of view, but if you're on a next-gen console or PC, then you may as well utilize this if you want to. Definitely something worth noting, and it isn't obvious. You can just find this in the display settings of the game, but definitely something worth looking at. So the eighth thing that the game doesn't tell you is that items do respawn. Once you have looted a place and you leave that area, after a certain amount of time, when you go back, all the items will respawn in suitcases and boxes that you have already explored. So really do consider going back to get some more materials. Of course, these items aren't exactly rare, but you want to have the freedom to explore with your weapons. You can also find cash when you go back as well, and this can be used to, of course, upgrade your favourite weapons, so definitely go back to areas you have explored. Don't think just because you've explored an area and looted it, oh, you can never really go back there again, there's no point. There really is definitely a point in going back to areas you've already been at, since, well, there's going to be brand new loot there. So, the ninth thing the game doesn't tell you is that Eat Delivery Zombies actually drop foods. So, if you do want to grab a protein bar or an energy drink very quickly, and you're in the middle of slaying a horde of zombies, then look out for the Eat Delivery Zombies. They will actually drop snacks and drinks from their bags as soon as you have taken them down. So if you are low on supplies when it comes to your energy drinks and also your protein bars, then killing a few of these will be able to increase that supply and make sure that you aren't dying anytime soon and staying on top of your health. So now we are onto the 10th and final thing that Dead Island 2 doesn't tell you, and that is that you can track items. You can track items that you need to craft specific mods or blueprints within the game. While making the most of items respawning, why not track the parts you need? This way you can actually keep an eye on the number of parts you have and how many you still need to get your hands on. Really useful feature there that you should definitely utilize when it is needed. So there you go, those are 10 things that Dead Island 2 doesn't tell you that really varied from being able to use an FOV slider on the next gen consoles and PC to knowing that items actually respawn within the game. Some of those things really aren't obvious and chances are you might have never actually found out that items respawn since you wouldn't go back to the areas you had already visited. But there we go, those were 10 things that Dead Island 2 doesn't tell you. And yeah, that does just about wrap up things here. Now I have actually done a video which is a complete beginner's guide to Dead Island 2. A link to that video is on the screen now if you are interested in watching that.